If you're planning to do an SFF build, there's probably quite a few numbers coming your way. So I'm gonna talk about clearances to focus on and what that means as you plan out your build. Welcome to Machines and More. So we're gonna do a few of these type of videos, uh, just primers or more beginner friendly walkthroughs. Hopefully you can find this helpful and I'll give you a few examples uh, in the case as I talk through the topic today. So SF cases, you have numbers like leader size and case dimensions, but as you are planning your build and trying to figure out what you can put in your case, I think there are more important numbers uh, to focus on. So these numbers aren't exactly unique to SFF, but typically within the genre, you have more constraints. So builders tend to focus on these. Now we'll say tools like PC Part Picker, they typically do a pretty good job accounting for the clearances, but there are quite a few nuances and sometimes components are trading spaces with one another. So it also helps just to understand uh, what these all mean and then you, know, you can plan from there. So we'll start with the most important number to know, uh, which is the cooler clearance measurement. And this is the number that I go to first, so regardless of what case I'm building in. So whether it's a sandwich style case where the GPU is on one side and the motherboard is on the other, or a traditional style case, you need to know the number that represents the maximum height for your cooling solution. So for a heatsink based cooler, you know, AKA air cooler, that's gonna be the height that the cooler occupies. So for example, in our good old Cooler Master Ender 200, that number is 155 millimeters. So that means that regardless of what type of air cooler you choose, the manufacturer specs the height from the top of your CPU to the side panel. So that's the number that you gotta look out for. So there you might choose a tire cooler that is lower than that dimension, such as the Hybrid 2 and 2 Black, which is only 152 millimeters, just as an example. Or perhaps you have a sandwich style case like I have here. This is the Lian Lee Dan A4H2O. You have 55 millimeters. So in a case like this uh, for an air cooler, you'll be looking at low profile top down coolers. So you will wanna choose one where the height is close to that 55 millimeters, but not taller than that. So something like the new ID cooling IS53 XT and uh, review that's coming real soon for this. So you might choose something like this. In a case where you can use a radiator based cooling solution or liquid cooling solution, such as this A4H2O, that 55 millimeter number also represents the height or the maximum protrusion from your CPU block. And that is keeping in mind that sometimes tubing or fitting that can increase the number. But oftentimes the company that makes the unit will quote a height number for the block. So you will wanna get a unit where the block is lower than 55 millimeters. Another set of numbers, the radiator specs. The simple part is if the case says 120, 142, 42, 80, that corresponds to the length or type of radiator that you can fit because it also implies the width. But this is also relevant if you aren't liquid cooling because that number tells you what kind of case fans that you can fit in lieu of a radiator. So with this case as an example, A4H2O, you can fit a, up to a 240 by 120 millimeter radiator. And that also means that you can use 220 millimeter case fans when you're using an air cooler. So the 120, 140, et cetera, res refers to the cross-sectional size of the radiator that you can fit, but you do also need to pay attention to the thickness that you can fit. And here you see the manufacturer spec is 55 millimeters. And that just means you need to pick a liquid cooling unit where the fans plus the radiators do not exceed 55 millimeters. So going back to the, our traditional layout in our 200, where the optimal placement for the radiator will be mounted on the side, just recall that 155 millimeter number for the cooler clearance. So in cases like this, that will more or less represent the space that you have for the radiator plus fans, plus the CPU block thickness, since they're now all occupying that same space, right? So typically 155 millimeters is not going to pose a problem except with the thickest units and the tallest blocks uh, in conjunction. But as a more extreme example of a traditional layout where this might be an issue is the T1 reference edition because you only have 115 millimeters. So if you're using an AIO, you do have to be more careful even with a 55 millimeter radiator plus fans, there are gonna be some taller blocks that will get you plenty close to that number. All right, so the next set of clearances that builders will pay attention to is if you're planning on running a graphics card. And that's typically going to be a component that takes up quite a bit of space. You know, they can be very long and uh, sometimes thick, right? So first off, the thickness of the card can be a little bit confusing. So sometimes you'll see that allowance is quoted in slot count, 
where you'll see an actual number that's given for that. So using our A4H2O here, Lily says three slots. And if you are shopping for a car like this, for example, Asus tells you two and a half slots for the Prime 9070 here, then you know that the thickness of the cooler from the back plate to the fans, uh, this thickness here is not going to be an issue. And sometimes I'll quote you an actual dimension because since an, uh, an expansion slot is very close to 20 millimeters, you can just use that as a rough conversion. So three slots equates to about 60 millimeters, right? Therefore, so long as your card is within the 60 millimeter thickness, you are good as 50 millimeters here. So the length of the card is also very important. So thankfully, this is a very straightforward uh, number to understand typically. So it's a, if it says 322 max or 9070 here is 312, then that's not gonna be a restrictive uh, dimension here, right? You have a good sense it'll fit in here. The trickier dimension is gonna be the width of the card, and that's gonna govern the dimension that's measured, for example, across, but you also have to account for the space that your power cable is gonna occupy, and that is typically going to require a good amount of wiggle room. So, for example, with the NR200, it tells you 156 millimeters, right? But GPU companies, they typically won't tell you the width of the card with the power connector uh, connected because it can vary based on what connector you have. Uh, just as an example here with an eight pin cable plugged in, you do add quite a bit here to the thickness beyond the, the edge here. Uh, if you have an NVIDIA 12V HPR or 12V 6x6 connector, that can add even more depending on the cable. So with this, there's about, and I you know, put a decent amount of bend on it, it can add about 25 millimeters. So it's, it's, it is actually quite a bit. And you also want to give some room for the cable to bend without being dangerously compressed. Right. So uh, some ports are recessed and some ports you'll get more clearance if they are recessed. Some like this card, they're flush up against the side, right? So this is the dimension that can vary quite a bit. So let's just say this one here. With, with uh, the prime card here is 130 millimeters. But once you add in the cable allowance, you know, that 25 millimeters, you do get very close to that 156, right? So that's where you have to be careful because adding the 25 millimeter number to the actual width of the card is not a bad general idea. So if you're thinking about an NVIDIA card, I covered this topic last year when NVIDIA announced her SFF Ready Enthusiast designation. So one area where this dimensional standard can in fact come in handy for a beginner is that if you pick a case on their list, as long as you choose a card that's also on their list, those two should fit together and that does simplify things somewhat. With an AMD partner card, there isn't a spec like that yet. In fact, this card um, actually it exceeds the NVIDIA dimensions, which is a 304 millimeter length max. But that doesn't may, mean that it won't fit in an SFF case, right? Because it just that means you're gonna have to do some homework and compare specs. And in fact, this does fit quite a few cases. For a wrap up here, there is a nuance that I wanted to call out. And that is if you are building in a sandwich style case with an adjustable spine, like the Form DT1 V2 or the Fractal Terra, in this type of setup, that number can vary. Uh, the thickness of the card competes for space with the cooler, so you do have to be conscious of the impact of adjusting the spine. One clearance will impact the other one. Uh, once you choose, say, your air cooler first, you know, you go with something big like the IS77 XT and the Terra, for example, then you have less thickness for your card. So this type of arrangement can be a little bit difficult to understand at first. Uh, Fractal, for example, offers this chart that shows you the different settings. Um, and it's a little bit um, more tangible once you start doing the build, but I would plan based on that uh, chart like that. So now that's a lot of info. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you are getting into SFF, I, I do cover a lot of related topics. So definitely would love to have you subscribed and on board. I'll also leave some product links down below to some items that I've mentioned. And uh, here's wishing you happy building and thanks for watching today.